Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I am a part of a blog hop celebrating Waffle Flowers um, Spring 2018 release. And I'm just quickly showing here their new packaging. A lot of you will see um, all of this like transitioning over to this fun new um, rainbow packaging in vinyl envelopes and there's a divider in the envelopes so you can put the dies in the back of the package. I love it. It's just fun. I didn't mind their yellow packaging from before but these vinyl envelopes are a lot. You can see it here but these vinyl envelopes are a lot more durable. I love the rainbow so they stand out quite a bit and yeah this release is huge. Um, so many adorable stamp sets and dies. I didn't even know where to begin, but what caught my eye immediately out of this whole release were these really fun seasonal sets that go with the Big Bear and Bird line from Waffle Flower, which is my absolute favorite line out of theirs. I just, I love the bear and his big bum. <laughs> It's so cute. So there's these four new sets and there's there's springtime, summertime, autumn time, and winter time. So I decided to use all four sets. I did an absolute ton of coloring and I just, I loved it. So I stamped the images onto Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock. So a good Copic friendly cardstock. This is my absolute favorite cardstock for Copic coloring. And I stamped the images with my favorite things, extreme black ink. And because these are brand new stamps, I stamped them multiple times to get a really good crisp black image. And I used my stamp positioner for that so I could stamp everything multiple times. Plus that way I could stamp all the images from the set onto the paper at once. And then I went in and started coloring with my Copic markers. So I've listed the colors onto, on the right of the screen here. Um, as I'm coloring and then I'm doing my, my standard <laughs> go-to which is working darkest to lightest. Um, for me it's kind of a time saver sort of a thing. However, if you want more control when you're coloring, um, I really suggest going the lightest to darkest route because that way you're not adding too much color. You're not um, going to like oversaturate or anything like that because with darker colors you can't, well you kind of can with Copics, remove a little bit like with the color with Blender, etc. But it's very hard to remove color, you know, or to lighten things up. You can do it to a degree, but then you'll oversaturate your cardstock. So for more control, it does help to go lightest to darkest. And it also helps if you really want to get a really high contrast look as well. I don't do a lot of that coloring. For me, I stick to kind of basic um, coloring. I usually only do like, you know, three color blends every rare once in a while I'll do four. Although if you really take the time and practice and everything else, and do for like four color blends that you can get some gorgeous like really contrast images some of the designers i see that you know really take it from light to dark and get really dark you know in the deepest areas of the images and the shadows and that it just makes the images pop but i still kind of stick to what works for me so i just work lightest to darkest i do i have been experimenting more with color combos people have been asking me about that a lot um, I highly, highly, highly recommend Googling um, Sandy Alnock's hexagon chart for Copics. It is, you just, you purchase it once and then it's a download and then you can print it off. And it is a huge game changer. It just, it helps to, it, it'll help you to keep kind of track of what markers you have, but it also helps to kind of look at them in a different way. And it gives you ideas of like what colors can go with what. And I've been, I, that's what I use it for a lot of the time is so that I can you know come up with color combos that I don't normally go for so that's what I did today with all these color combos is I was just looking at the chart and like seeing colors that I really liked that looked well together for this like this whole springtime set I went with like paler color combos which are always a struggle for me because I always want to do like the deepest brightest you know rainbow colors <laughs> so I highly recommend um, looking at that chart and getting it if you don't already have it. So for all of this, I just went along and I would color every single area um, that I wanted to do in those colors. So I did all my greens at once. Now I'm doing all of my pinks. I had done the little brown of the sign and the flower centers. 
And now I'm going to go in and do purples. And then finally, I'm going to add some yellows. So just doing everything in one step, my typical kind of almost like mass production type method. I do that with my coloring as well to make things go um, a little bit quicker, especially when I'm doing this much coloring. Like just one set wasn't bad, but when I did all four, <laughs> I spent a lot of time coloring. I loved it. I loved every second of it. I just kind of shook my head at myself because like I don't, I'm so crazy busy, but these were so much fun to color and it's always so much fun to see everything kind of come to life once you add all of the color. So after I had finished coloring in all my images, I did go in with a white gel pen and add just little, you know, highlights, little dots for texture, etc, etc. And then um, after that was all done, I'm going to use the coordinating die set and I'm going to tape all of those into place. I just use washi tape with a set like this where there's tons of little images. Um, it ends up looking like a right mess with all the washi tape, but I just use um, washi tape to make sure to hold everything in place. I use extra washi tape to make sure these dies are not going to move, you know, they're not going to shift or anything when I run this through my machine so that everything gets die cut. I leave out any um, dies that the images I'd stamped too close together. So I'll run this through, die cut almost everything, and then the couple remaining images I will die cut. On a second pass so basically two passes through my machine and I've got every single image die cut so once I've done that I can set all these images aside and then go on to the next series of images so I'm gonna play some music here and then I'll be back in a bit to explain how I um, created the rest of these cards
Alrighty, so after I had colored in all the sets and die cut everything, I'm going to work on my card bases. So I have some A2 side folding cards here that I'd made from Bristol Smooth cardstock. And I have the largest dome die from the A2 um, nested dome wafer die set from Waffle Flower. And I lined that up onto my card base so that the side where the fold is, is just inside the cut line as well as the bottom. So that all this is going to cut is that dome shape off the top there and nothing else. So after I run this through my die cut machine, I'm now left with a side fold card with that dome shape. And it's still A2 size, so it's five and a half inches high by four and a quarter inches wide. And I'm going to do that four times. So I have all my card bases and then to create the frame for my shaker, I'm, st I'm using that largest die again along with the second largest and I'm just lining them up and taping them into place again with some washi tape so that the, they don't shift and then this is going to create a frame and same thing. I'm going to run this through four times and create four frames. The center pieces of that white cardstock I'll just save for a future project. And then while I'm die cutting all of that, I'm also die cutting the base and the little handle that um, is included in the die set. And I'm die cutting that from some Nina Desert Storm cardstock. So I'm going to end up with four card bases, four frames, four bases, and four um, handles for my little terrarium lids. And I'm going to take all of the card bases and I'm going to sponge distress inks onto them. And I'll have the colors listed that I used because I'm only just going to show one because it's the same process over and over again. But basically I did is I start with the bottom of the card and I'm just sponging on the distress ink. I chose very light colors. I didn't want it to be overwhelming. I just wanted a bit of color for the background for all my images. So for this one, because it was for the springtime set, I used Spun Sugar Distress Ink. It's just a really nice pretty pale pink and blended that onto the card base. And that's why I chose Bristol Smooth cardstock for my bases because Distress Inks just blend like a dream on it. So sponged on the color and then I just um, tapped a paintbrush with clean water over top of that, let it sit for 30 seconds or so and then picked up with a paper towel. It's hard to see on screen, but in real life, you know, it gives it that fun distress um, splatter look. And then I also smushed the ink pad onto an acrylic block and added a bit of water and tapped it again with a, a paintbrush on my finger and that just created a little bit of a pink splatter. And same thing, I did the same thing with all the other cards as well because I used scattered straw, dried marigold, and tumbled glass. So all of them ended up with that same distressed splatter look and then I used the same colors to create a little bit of color splatter just to give it that little bit of texture. And then for all of the bases and the handles, um, when these are die cut it also um, embosses a wood grain pattern into them. So I sponged on gathered twigs distress ink onto all these pieces and it just makes that wood grain like kind of pop out and gives it all that more you know realistic wood look. So after I had done that I am going to now create the um, shaker element itself. So I've got my frames here and I had die cut some acetate with that largest dome die. And normally, I, and I've said this before, I don't like using liquid adhesive when I'm using acetate because it just, it has a tendency to ooze out everywhere. But because these are on a curve and I'm doing four of them, liquid adhesive is the easiest. So I'm using um, Ranger's Collage Medium Matte here and I'm just squeezing a really thin amount on the back of each frame and then pressing the acetate into it making sure everything's all lined up and trying very hard not to let the um, acetate move around when I'm adhering it to the frame so that yeah the glue doesn't ooze out anywhere and like I said really thin line so I don't have you know a glue mess because it would still show up on the acetate it dries matte but it'll show up on acetate so after I let um, I set all those aside to dry and now I'm going to actually adhere all my little elements and create my fun little scene. So I just lay them out onto my card base and kind of figure out where I want to put all these different little elements and little characters and whatnot. And once I'm kind of happy with it, I can start adhering things. So some of the elements I adhered directly onto the card base. And I just, again, use that collage medium adhesive. Um, for this, multimedia matte would work just as well, but since I already had the collage medium out, that's what I used. So some of the elements like th this one I adhere flat, and then the other ones I'm going to pop up with a little bit of foam tape. 
Um, I have these little, you know, mini 3D adhesive foam squares just to give it that little extra dimension. So some things I pop up, some things I glue down. I just kind of go along and just start um, adhering everything. And that's another reason why I use these little foam squares because some of these elements are really small. And it also enables me to kind of tuck different things, you know, behind some elements as I'm like gluing them all down. And I tried to make a point of using all of the pieces that I had stamped and colored on each of these um, cards just to create my fun little scenes. And since I already, you know, took the time to color them and highlight them and die cut them and that. So with this little one, I just adhere these flowers um, higher up because this bunny is going to kind of cover up the fact that they're not actually attached to anything. They're just kind of floating there. But I pop the bunny up with foam tape so it lo just looks like these have like really long stems. And then I adhere that little heart to make it look like he's holding it. I just, that is like the cutest little bunny image ever. It just made my day. It was so much fun making these. So after I had adhered all my elements, to actually make this into more of a shaker card, but really I just wanted the um, cover, since this is kind of like a terrarium, um, to be popped up with foam tape. It just so happens to make it into a shaker card. So you didn't, ha you don't have to if you don't want to, but it really wouldn't have been any more difficult to just to make this one solid piece. Um, I just doubled up some narrow foam tape and then um, applied it all around the frame here. So really would be no different if you just used, you know, you could use pieces, but it's not really any extra work to create like a solid um, line of foam tape on here so that I could make it into a shaker. So I just went along, adhered everything around the upper part of the dome, and then I'm going to adhere it along the bottom, which is gonna kind of seal it in so that I can turn this into a fun little shaker card. So I'm going to trim off the excess um, here and then I'm just going to add some Pretty Pink Posh. I have the three millimeter sparkling clear sequins. I didn't add a lot because my goal wasn't to, you know, create a full on shaker. It was more about like the little scene and the elements and everything and like making this look like a fun little terrarium. So I just added a few little sequins and then I um, adhered the cover of this dome over top of the scene I'd created. And then I'm going to adhere the bottom with that collage medium and then add a little line of the um, adhesive to the handle and that's going to finish off my card. And I repeated this process for all of the other ones. I just didn't bother doing it all on camera because um, this video is already quite long and we would be here all day. <laughs> so I finished off this little card. So I have a spring scene, a summer scene, an autumn scene, and a winter scene. And they're all little terrarium cards, all A2 size, just slightly bigger. Um, and yeah, they have all these fun elements. And then the winter one, I did add some snowflake shape sequins and some larger ones because it's a winter scene. It just, it worked. So that, uh, that is my video and my cards for today. I will have a link below the video to my blog post. Make sure to check it out, please, because it's part of a blog hop and there's giveaways. And all the info and links the supplies used will be in the blog post as well. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.